What's going on, guys? I have three fascinating puzzles for you, including this one on the board. Black's pawns are going down. White's pawn is going forward. There's a lot happening here, which we will talk about in just a second. However, I think we really should warm up by looking at the other two puzzles first, and we'll save this one for the end. So we're going to start with this puzzle right here. White's pawns are going forward. Black's pawns are going this direction. It's white to play and win. What move should white play? All right, if you had a chance to look at that, the winning move is king to f6. And the point is we're trying to trap black's king over here on the side of the board. We have to prevent the escape route on g7. Also, we're attacking this pawn, which is threatening the immediate checkmate. If we had an extra move right now, the game would be over. Of course, black can't take us or we'll simply push this pawn forward and then this one delivering checkmate with the pawn. And so because of that, black has to play bishop to g8, creating an escape square for their king. However, we can follow up with f takes g6. Now, if you thought this, you would also be correct, but that's a longer checkmate. Okay, the shorter version is to capture, sorry, um, the shorter version is to capture here. We're completely trapping black's king. Notice how it can't move anywhere right now, which means we are threatening to take this with checkmate. So the only way black can stop that is by taking us. It doesn't matter what they do with their bishop, but once they take us, we still have that same idea, g5 and then g4 for the checkmate with the tripled pawns. So nice little fun one there just to warm you up. Let's go ahead and jump over to the next puzzle. All right, here's the next position. It's white to play and win. If you'd like to pause and try to find the winning continuation, go ahead and do that and then we'll talk about it. All right, if you had a chance to look at that, when you first look at this, it doesn't look like there's too much happening here for white. I mean, our king and queen are way over here. We are down a piece. Black has this extra knight. Doesn't really look like black's king is in too much danger. However, after g4 check, it forces the king to h4. We have an amazing move here uh, that's the key to this puzzle. And the move is bishop to h6. Essentially giving away the bishop for free, but black has to take it. If they don't take it and they play really any move, we're going to swing the queen over and this is checkmate. Okay, the king can't escape now. So because of that, black has to either take our bishop or run with their king, but then we simply take their queen for free. So they're going to take it. And now if you'd like to pause again, what is the move we can play here? If you had a chance to do that, queen to h2 is the move, forces the king back here, and then we have the follow-up queen to d2 check lining up here, and you might be thinking, wait a second, Nelson, did you forget about the knight? The knight can just block on f4. What do we do now? That's correct. Queen to d8 is not just check, it's actually checkmate. Isn't that amazing? All of these pieces are somehow stopping Black's King from being able to escape along with the help of our lone pawns here. And that's a really uh, unique checkmate. You don't see that every day. So hopefully you guys enjoyed those two puzzles. Just a little warm up ones, not super difficult, but a little bit tricky. And now it's time for the main feature. So before I say anything, if you'd like to pause and think through this position, uh, maybe you can try to come up with an idea for how white can win, and then we'll start talking about the solution. All right, if you had a chance to do that. So this is a really interesting position, and it's super interesting because essentially all of these pieces are kind of tied up. And what do I mean by that? It's white to play. Uh, these pawns are going down here. We're going forward, so we can't move our pawn. We can't move our rook. It's stuck. We could move our queen somewhere, but let's just say we moved it like up here. Well, now black is going to be able to move this bishop and then get a queen. See, the reason that black couldn't do that before is because we have a checkmate threat on g2. So if we don't move our queen away, black can never move their bishop. But if we move it away, then that happens. Now, you might say, well, what if we go like here to keep the checkmate threat? Well, now our rook is undefended and black can simply take our rook and then they're going to be getting a queen here. Not what we wanted. And if we tried to go here, well, the knight would just capture us. And so you can see how we really don't want to move our queen, which means our rook has to stay there. The pawn is blockaded. And because of that, as white, the only piece we have to move is our king. And of course, black doesn't want to move the knight. And then it just gets captured and they're going to lose. They can't move the king. They can't move the pawns. They don't want to move the bishop because of the checkmate. So like I mentioned, all of these pieces are just stuck, except for that black knight and our white king. Now... There's an interesting thing about the position in that 
we need to keep our king on the dark squares. Why do we need to keep our king on the dark squares? If we try to move to a white square, the bishop is going to put us in check, and then black's going to get a queen. And now we're losing, right? Um, because there's no more checkmate threat, and black obviously has the queen to, you know, whatever. So we can't do that. So we have to keep our king on the dark squares. And what are we going to do with our king? Well, we're going to probably make a beeline for this corner, right? Now, some of you might be wondering, what if we just move our king? Black has to move. Can't we just get a queen, right? Because our pawn is about to be promoted. The problem with this is black's going to take it. And remember, we don't want to move our queen, right? Because if we do this, what did we just do? We don't have the checkmate threat anymore, which means this bishop can move. And next move, black gets a queen. And now we're losing. Right, And if we don't take the knight and keep moving our king, well, we just gave away the pawn for free, and now black's knight is free to do whatever it wants, and we still have the same problem of we can't move our pieces over here, right? So, if you were wondering, that's why we can't do that. So we really have to somehow get our king over there to deal with the knight, right? The question is, how do we do that? And you might think that it's pretty easy because you just walk towards the knight, right? Here's the problem. Black's going to go there. We're going to go there. Black's going to go there. We're going to go there. And black's going to go knight to g6. And notice what happens. That square is taken away. And you might be thinking, that's not a big deal. We can just loop around. So we go king to c5. Knight goes back. And we go king to d6. But again, look what black's going to do. Knight to g6. And look at this. We can't move forward. Remember, we can never go to the white squares. Because why? That's right. Bishop check, followed by black gets the queen. So what do we do in this position? Or actually, let's go back and move. What do we do in this position instead of going king to d6? Well, if you had a chance to look at that and you said king to b6, you would be correct. But the question is, how does this actually help us? Because black is still going to do the same dance, knight to g6. And if we try to come over, black's going to do the same thing. And if we try to come in here, knight to g6. Again, always taking away the squares where we need to go. Remember, we can't go to the white square because of the check, right? So going back to this position, after we play king to b6, what's our plan? What should our plan be? Well, the amazing idea is to go king to a7, followed by, wait for it, king to a8. And I know I said don't go on a white square. This is actually the only white square you can go on because the bishop can't get to that one, right? Look at this. All of these other white squares are covered by the bishop, right? All of them, except the A1 square that we are currently on. That's pretty cool, right? So we found a safe white square, which is great, but you might be thinking, so what? Like, why does that help us? If you are familiar with how knights move at the end of the game, you will understand why this is such a big deal. I'm guessing a lot of you aren't familiar with this because it's a much more advanced concept. So let me explain it like this. There's a concept in chess called a tempo. Every move is one tempo. So white gets a tempo and then black gets a tempo. So I make a move and then black makes a move and I make a move and black makes a move, right? It's just a tempo. Knights by definition, cannot lose tempo because they're always switching colors. There's just no way to do it. However, a king can lose a tempo by switching to like a white square and then coming around a different direction. And so let me show you exactly how this affects the game. So black's going to keep doing the same thing. And now we're going to hop back to the dark squares. Okay. And watch what happens when we come in this time. The knight tries to stop us on f7 this time, we loop back around, back to our center path, and look at this. Do you remember, remember this position earlier? Earlier, the knight had moved here, prevented us from coming in, and we were like, what are we going to do? But now, we just moved here, and it's black who has to make a move. That happened because we wasted a tempo over here with our king, and black had no way to waste a tempo because they had to go back and forth with the knight. Okay, and so this is this is it. Now we're winning because the knight has to go to the corner, which lets us come in, right? They put us in check. We come in. They go here. We go here. They go here. And now what should we play? Well, if you said take the knight, you would be wrong because remember, that's a white square. Now we get checked 
and there's the queen. So that's not the correct move. The correct move is simply getting the queen, forcing the knight to take us, and then taking it because now, guess what? Black has to move the bishop, doesn't matter where it moves, and we get the checkmate. Wow. So basically, just to recap, the king had to do this dance of walking here, coming over here, going to the corner, coming back like this, around this way, and then eventually coming in. Hope you guys enjoyed those. I'll see you next time. As always, stay sharp, play smart, and take care.